Hello guys, welcome to another edition of the Green Go Show. I'm your host, Adrian Babishoff, helping you live a better life through awesome alternatives. Today's episode is about stacking functions. Why the hell would you want to learn about stacking functions if you don't know them already? It's because they're fucking badass. This is the stuff that's gonna help you guys organize your life through money, through all, through getting time. That's the time that you need. We talk a lot about about that on this show here. Stacking functions is an incredible thing. Um, what are they? Stacking functions is basically taking something and having utilizing it to, for its maximum potential to do multiple things that benefit either you, nature, or something else. It's just, it's a way to organize things. How, much, how many of us apply this in our lives? Well, let's get into it and see how this stuff can help you. So I want to give you guys an example of how I've stacked functions. Uh, one example is, is a pond. So I have lots of things going on here. This one's interesting because I think I might have stumbled across inventing a certain procedure. I'm not sure yet. I haven't verified and researched if somebody else is doing it, but we'll get to it. So the pond. I went and bought a 75-gallon water trough and I filled it up. It's just a black trough you get at the feed store. They use it for cows and, and uh, you know animals to drink the water. And that's one of the first functions that it serves. Um, I have a method I want to teach you guys. Uh, I filled it with water. We have we evaporated the chlorine. We also have another thing called chloramine. Uh, I, you stick uh, chewable vitamin C tablets in there and it helps to evaporate the chloramine. Chloramine does not evaporate. So being a water trough, is actually serving the function of my dog. A lot of you guys probably don't know, I live in an RV park, so I'm very limited in space. I used to live on five acres, uh, but the past few months, we've been, we've, we're on about three months, I think now, living here in the RV park and it's changing things around and simplifying our life, so you guys get to follow us on that. So, <clears throat> on the farm, you know, uh, there was plenty of places for dog to drink water. And now I have that here in the RV park. I don't have to worry about filling up the dish or coming up with one of those. Uh, one of my solutions was you get a, a liter bottle or a gallon, you flip it upside down and tape it to a stick off of a, a watering dish and you just have to fill that up every once in a while. Gone, simplified. The dogs always got pond water to drink. Um, the next thing that, it, that this, the stacking functions that this does is the aesthetics. And so we needed goldfish and I took my uh, two daughters in and they got to pick out two two goldfish we got simple little feeder goldfish for like I think it was like 19 cents a piece and it was very cute they got to name them and everything and we put them in the pond and they're a, they're a very large part of our days I mean every morning you, when you wake up uh, they got their heads poking out I mean literally poking out of the, the air at you and from spending so much time with them they're like they are seriously pets like they hang around us if you're in one end of the pond they'll come over there and you know stick their lips out and then look at you and you can we can almost pet them at this point. There's a female in there. We did lose one, by the way, so we're down to tres, only three. Um, but the, my daughter likes to stick her finger in there, and they'll take little nibbles and stuff, and and she'll she just almost you can almost pet them. And another funny thing is when the dog, you know, how dogs drink water and their tongue starts doing that backwards thing. The fish will actually come over and start playing with their tongue, <laughs> so it's really cute. But yes, it. We live next to a freeway, and I have a. A small hose that comes up from a pump and it it's oxygenating the water for the fish but it's uh it's also breaking up this the noise that we have around here we live next to a freeway and that really helps to kind of balance things out and divert your ears a little bit from the the hum um, people who actually walk their pets always compliment me when they come by and say oh, it sounds so peaceful by your place the sound of running water is very soothing and it is the other thing that's soothing is, is it's a stress reliever. If you're just having a bad day or just even thinking having a great day, it's very pleasing to sit there and watch the fish play and you watch their fins move gracefully. So it serves a lot on the ambiance and everything there. Um, so let's move on to the next one is the fertilizer. So uh, this is getting into, I'm growing food in this pond as well now with these fish. It's called aquaponics if a lot of you people uh, aren't familiar it's basically when you you take fish and they excrete uh, their excretions and the plants will soak up this nutrient and in turn purify it and give it clean water back for the the fish so the plants are getting all the nutrients they need and the fish are getting the water clean so it's a symbiotic relationship 
I won't go into too much detail unless you guys want. I need to know what you guys want to hear. Look at the description below. Get my my uh, message me, and I'll do. I'm here for you guys. I want to talk about all this stuff. I know there's so much, so much, but yes, it. Uh, so basically, it's fertilizer. I'm I'm going to. Uh, I always have to grow something. That's just the type of person I am. So I've got these uh, little buckets, uh, earth buckets, and uh, some of my own little variations like wicking buckets and things like that. And I won't go into detail again unless you guys ask me. But basically, I can grow these my plants in in any kind of medium. I am going to put some some like mushroom compost and things like that in there. But the most part of the nutrients comes from the pond. So I'm going to be able to scoop out a couple of gallons of this stuff every week not only water my, give my plants water but give them water with nutrients in it very excited about that I haven't got that built yet uh, but that's basically I'm raising my own fertilizer I have been trained in commercial aquaponics and building and running a full operation um, and the story the people who, who uh, were teaching me uh, verified what I thought on this, this concept was that uh, they were in the big island of Hawaii that's very wet and a lot of rain came and it overfilled their their aquaponic system their troughs and the the water poured down the side of this little cliff where there was uh, lots of lava rock and there was some banana plants that were hanging banana trees and they weren't doing too good because there wasn't much nutrients it was all lava rock but as soon as that water kept hitting that area for a while they finally resolved the problem stopped the leak and they said the bananas just went entirely and completely insane like it was just it the, the water remineralized the uh, the soil there uh, I also had about a year ago, unfortunately, uh, but it was good. I won't go into details, but uh, Dr. Vinograd, who was featured in the movie The Beautiful Truth, I think. Uh, I think it's The Beautiful Truth. Uh, he's the one that rubs the amalgams and shows the smoke coming off of them and why they're bad for you. Basically a holistic dentist, and I had the privilege of having him uh, work on my mouth. And... Um, he said he was doing the same thing. He was taking this, these, these aqua, the water from his fish tanks, and uh, I guess he had a little garden and pouring. He says his, he just noticed his plants going insane, just tomatoes, just flourishing. So I'm basically growing, uh, or I'm sorry, not growing. I'm producing my own fertilizer. Um, so the next thing that this pond is doing is it's feeding me, it's feeding my fish, and it's feeding my dog. I just found out a little while back. So basically, what I've done. And this is the invention, guys. Is, and I hope any of you guys run. I don't give a shit. I think it's awesome. I want to see. Send me some pictures, though, please. Um, basically, what I'm doing is raising microgreens inside with the actual fish, so uh, the fish get to eat the roots of the of the uh, microgreens that I'm growing. Right now, I'm doing lettuce and I'm doing uh, kale, and we have been getting some snacks off of it. The lettuce is not doing too well, but the kale is doing phenomenal. Uh, and Hazel likes to eat it. So my dog, for some reason, is eating that kale, and I think it's totally fine. Um, I actually picked some lettuce from the top, threw it in the tank, and observed my goldfish eating it. Um, but they get to what happens is uh, in aquaponics, they, they usually separate the fish. You put a fish tank in one area. The water is then pumped through a series of pipes into a trough without any fish so that they don't ruin the root system of the plants. And then the water is brought back. In my case, I'm putting them all together, and essentially, in, in microgreens, you don't need very much of a root system, and they're getting tons of nutrients. So, my fish are eating all the roots, and I know this because I lift up the uh, the uh, trays, and I'm looking underneath, and I'm not seeing any roots. And you can see there's tons. There's a root system. They're just the, the fish are basically pruning it off. So, what we have here is we have uh, we're producing our own fish food, and I just want to state that I haven't starved my fish yet. Uh, I'm debating. I need to get more plants in there, I think, for them. But I, I know that they're eating off of it. So I'm producing food for my fish, and I'm producing food for myself, and I'm also producing food for my dog, and possibly some wildlife, which is the uh, next one is habitat. So this thing is producing habitat. I am in the firm belief that if you're going to do things, you know, we're taking up this land, you know, chaining it up blocking all nature out for the progress of human beings uh, which we need to do but it makes me feel good to know that i'm giving back some and by seeing the frogs that have been showing up and the toads uh, back on the farm we had snakes um, here we have dragonflies damselflies the ants uh, bees things are coming in and just enjoying the pond and it's 
the dragonflies just completely completely boggle my mind the beauty of them the beauty did you, did you guys know a little fact that they were saying that I think it was that dragonflies they don't actually even f like flap their wings they actually like vibrate a frequency each one of those little little veins in the in the wing is actually hollow uh, I mean it's a crazy crazy I don't want to go too off but just crazy shit anyway beautiful magnificent creatures and it's an honor to see them here um, at my place in my little pond in my little tiny I have about 500 square feet of living space that's that is also my outdoor area is also included in that so it's about 200 and about 200 square feet of living space and we have 500 square or I'm sorry 300 square feet of actual uh, yard so that's where this pond is located so we went through its creating habitat the very last one I'll share with you guys is it's, it it emergency I'm not one of those survivalist crazy guys uh, you know and I don't think any of those people are well some of them some of them are fucking weird you know but I like to be prepared and that's another thing you guys are gonna see on the show is a, a little bit of that preparedness but not in that crazy crazy way like burying yourself in a bunker you know and doing weird shit uh, but in an emergency which we had here it was uh, that the water went out somebody broke a main line and we were out of water and if that ever occurs again um, if there was a large earthquake you know we've had catastrophes all over Texas got flooded what was it Louisiana um, there was all kinds of stuff going on and here we live in shaky town I call it and uh, if there was ever a massive earthquake and and water lines broke I would still have 75 gallons of fresh clean water then yes you can drink it the uh, going back on the guy who taught me the aquaponics he actually drank the water in front of us to prove a point uh, that it's it's clean I I would be my last resort but he's fine he's not dying of diarrhea or nothing but yes it gives I have a special needs daughter too so if I had to wash my hands you know changing diapers and things like that whatever have you we have 75 gallons of water there um, so in an emergency this thing would really come in handy um, so you guys see the basis of stacking functions and how that how that plays out you know it's very very significant so on moving on next <clears throat> I want to give you guys five things that you guys can do to utilize stacking functions and they're simple um, I want to move into to more of them more uh, descriptive more more uh, meat on the on the subject there but I need to know from you guys what you guys want to hear message me again and, and I'll continue to give you guys I'll tailor an entire podcast maybe just to things that we can do in, our, in everyday life but for today I'm give, skimming over it trying to get you guys interested and get you guys in the mind frame so I got five of them for you and bum ba da bum I got you guys a bonus today too look at that so uh, five things that you can do right now is you can start replacing some of your your uh, appliances and things in your home uh, to give you guys an example um, I've got a Vitamix yes it costs some money but it's built very very well uh, get yourself a blender uh, that can do multiple things you know you want a smoothie they're very healthy it's very good to eat smoothies just throw whole fruits and stuff in there but the but what 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 do these some of these blenders do as far as stacking functions they do a lot you know I'm just gonna give you guys one example you can take uh, your blender and you some of these you can grind wheat into flour some of them spin so fast you could actually make a bowl of soup so if you were sick or something you know what I mean throw some bunch of vegetables some chicken broth turn that fucking thing on bam in 10 minutes you got hot pureed soup um, you can make uh, desserts like sorbets and and ice creams and uh, I mean the list goes on and it and by getting this you can actually eliminate a lot of things that you have inside your, on your sink or in your home and simplify your life so you have the time to do things that you uh, that you want to do but this will make you healthier uh, you know what I'm always on the go I work my fucking ass off 15 hours a day sometimes so I love throwing in filling that thing up and and by stacking functions I'll make myself like three four smoothies that's my breakfast in the morning I only got to clean up once and I got this beautiful machine and I'll tell you what I'm a piece of shit in the morning when I wake up so it's one less thing that I got to do is go and grab a a, a, a a quart mason jar full of my smoothie and go get, go to work I'm driving sipping on my smoothie it's wonderful uh, next thing on the list you guys can do is make use of your auto your uh, auto transportation uh, if you guys don't know about this yet you know it's again simple but I think it's needs to be brought up I you know 
on this show, I think a lot of things, I talk to people and I share ideas and stuff with them. And I notice that some people are already thinking this way, but a lot of people aren't. So some of you might be going, come on, but I've got something for all of you. Okay, but what I mean by make use of your auto transportation, when you're going out, a lot of people will just go out. I got to go to the post office and visit a friend. That's it. Well, why don't you take uh, an account of your food if you need to pick up anything for uh, tomorrow, tonight, for next week, something that you missed. Uh, maybe even stock up on a few little things or look up on, on, on some coupons or something, somewhere you can save some money. Make that trip count. Every time you get in that car and drive and the time that it takes you to go, you're already in town, you know, uh, or down the street. Go pick up some, some groceries. Go to the post office. Go to visit a friend. Maybe you can pick up some recreational alcohol, ethanol, while you're on your way and don't drink and drive. But maybe you have the legal limit, you know, maybe a couple steaks. Hey, you can come over to my house if you're doing that shit. <laughs> uh, but you see where I'm going is make use of it. Think of as many things as you can do. Fill up your gas tank if it's this weekend, you know what I mean? Fill that fucker up even if you have half a tank. That way it's one less thing you got to do on Thursday or Friday when you're on your way home or late for work. You know, make use of your auto transportation. Uh, it's going to save you money. It's going to do a lot of things. Next on the list is quit your fucking gym. And I mean that. There's a, I'm not sure if I'm, uh, if I'm pronouncing his last name right. Jason Statham, uh, the karate dude. Uh, guy was in uh, Snatch, uh, in the transporter. I was completely amazed to see this dude. He was hanging sideways off of a pole just by his hands, like completely body, just lengthwise hanging out. Uh, but basically what he says is to keep from being bored and keep things exciting he does uh he'll do everything he'll go skateboarding and he'll go jogging and he'll just find stuff to like exercise on so some of us may th think yeah we, we need to be disciplined i need a gym so i can spend all this money and go do and it's disgusting there's sweat all over everything and and then you got to go see these healthy fucks with their fucking six-pack abs well you look like shit unless you look good you know I don't want to fucking go in there and be a disgrace, you know, uh, <laughs> just being funny. You know what I mean? But to have the drive, you guys have the drive, save some money and get out there in nature. It's it's soothing. It's wonderful to keep your brain working. You know, that's one of the tactics I think that we can save from Alzheimer's. Uh, I, I, I heard somebody in the holistic arena talking about is always changing things up because your mind gets stuck in one area in a, in a rhythm. And if you never get out of it, it's not, it's like a muscle. It doesn't get worked out. So work your mind out, be exciting, introduce yourself to new possibilities. You might be running or, or I, I love to walk very fast and you may meet people and see things that you've never seen before. You know, fill up two milk jugs instead of buying dumbbells, save yourself some money, carry those things, just lift them up. Sure. You'll look like a fucking weirdo, but when you look like I do, who gives a fuck? You know what I mean? Be yourself. Fuck everybody. Um, but I mean that in a positive way. <laughs> uh, so quit your gym and start doing things different. You know, like I said, it's, it's a wonderful thing. Think of things a little bit different, man. You can save some money. You'll get exercise, fresh air, and you don't have to think about how better somebody else looks, you know, than you do. Think about it. Cook in bulk and buy in bulk. Go get your friends rounded up or get other families. That's what we're looking to do right now is... Uh, is we're getting a bunch of people together so that we can go split the Costco uh, membership. We'll go in and buy a whole bunch of, of food and stuff like that and make this a party, man. You're, you're saving money. You're getting good quality goods. And uh, yeah, you're saving money and buying good quality goods. And then guess what? While you're there, pick up some uh, some stuff to make a party, a couple steaks or whatever it is you're doing, a lunch invite. If you're, if you're a bunch of 20-year-olds, uh, you know what I mean? Get the whole Costco, go get yourself a Costco card, get your friends involved and then invite them all over, have a barbecue with some beers and stuff and have a great time. And while you're doing that, split up the food. You know, all you gotta do is get a little scale, you know, and just everybody bring your own jars and things like that and make it a party, man. Save money and, uh, you know, and everybody can rotate. You can have where other people will go uh, grocery shopping for you. So this is, this is a way to uh, stack functions there and save money. And now on to the bonus then. The bonus round is listen to podcasts while you're commuting. You know, music's awesome and I love listening to music and everything too, but I've got so much, I've got to get ahead. I've got to educate myself on a lot of things and I'm interested in a lot of things. I guarantee you guys, if you haven't listened to a podcast, 
listen to the gringo show and uh come in every single day and listen to the gringo show no i'm just kidding <laughs> i'm not trying to brainwash you but listen to there's there's podcasts out for just about everything and uh, i have really really learned a hell of a lot utilize that downtime while you're having to commute and just pop your phone in put your earphones on uh, do what i did there's if you've got the stereo uh, i'm old school uh, and I, I just found this out like two months ago. They actually have the guy installed a used radio for me, and it has one of those plugs you can plug into your phone. So you don't have to do the Bluetooth, but you could actually listen to the podcast through your speakers. And I'll just put on things that I'm interested in. Right now, I'm learning how to build websites and do things like that. And I learned a hell of a lot, man. Um, so, yeah, make use of that time. And you know what's awesome? Pop your phone. I'm going to give you guys another, one last bonus. I'll pop my earbuds in when I'm having to go through Costco or in the grocery store, you know, DMV, whatever. And I'm actually in my own little world and having to wait in line doesn't even bother me. I'm like, in fact, sometimes I'm like, I've, I've got some, I get excited. I got a good one. I'm like, Hey, you, you with enough groceries to feed a family of fucking of 12. First of all, you shouldn't have that many children, but you have it. Take that. I want you to go in front of me. You know what I mean? You'll actually find like, you're just really laid back and like, I don't know. It fills up your time. That's all I'm saying. And you're also educating yourself. Um, so yes, those are the bonuses. And that's the five things, seven, I guess, things that you can do. And I want to hear from you guys, your perspectives. If you guys want to hear more on this, uh, send me in some, some things that you have maybe going on in your life that you want to change. Send me in the details maybe, and I'll see if I can come up with something to tailor for you and just go, Hey, from an outside perspective, uh, let's look at the way you're running your business. Uh, or the way you're running your household and I can kind of share some ideas of things that we do to make your life easier um, I want to tell you guys some stories of people who utilize stacking functions Quentin Tarantino is one that pops into mind Quentin Tarantino uh, took off I just learned today I think he was 14 years old he told school see you later he went to go work at a being a movie usher I think and then they didn't want to uh, admit that he actually I think it was a uh, rated X place. <laughs> Go Quentin. Hey, get it. Get yourself uh, happy there. Uh, but he immersed himself. Uh, he knew what he wanted to do. He wanted to make movies. So he also got a job working as a uh, um, the uh, in a video rental place for all you drop offs, drop outs. Just kidding. But all you people who are who uh, aren't as old as uh, some of us are, we used to have to go to places to rent movies. You know, VHS. But the point was is that he, he surrounded himself with movies with what he loved and there's a lot of downtime in there so he's able to, he was working on his scripts and everything. He utilized that for his business for him to get ahead and uh, and you can see how stacking functions. He's like a he's a multimillionaire and got what he wanted and was living the dream. I hope I hope you're fucking happy, Quint. I hope you're happy, dude. You gotta be. Um, let me tell you guys what I do. So I own my own construction business. And let me see if I can explain this without fucking it up. So how am I stacking functions in my business? Well, uh, I've been learning to do like these podcasts and videos and things like that. And I've been learning to build my website. And uh, if you guys go there by, by the, uh, by the way, uh, it's, it's not much going on there, but a bunch of posts, I'm still learning. Um, but it is a long progress going. But that's what I do late at night till 1, 2 in the morning. See, that's why I have a license to be fucking loopy too, you guys. I get like four or five hours of sleep at night. So that's why you're looking at, what did he just say? When I go and edit these videos, I'm like, I could see shit that I was saying. And I'm just like, what the fuck? Why would I say something like that? <laughs> but uh, yeah, license to be loopy. But anyways, at nighttime, I learn, I'm learning how to build websites. I'm learning how to utilize social media to promote this podcast. Uh, mainly what I've been doing is... I have to keep paying the bills so what I've been doing is uh, promoting my business so I'm building a website for my business learning how to do that I'm learning how to promote it through Facebook YouTube uh, any any ways that I can and it's actually starting to pay back now so I'm actually getting a free education um, it just takes me you know some elbow grease uh, it's making me money already while I'm learning and let's just say that uh, let's just say something happened and the uh, economy uh, collapsed. Let's just take that right there. And and construction just went down the poop chute. Now I have these skills 
uh, that I can, uh, you know, in time where I could build websites, I could do promotion of businesses, uh, I could do all kinds of things, doing video editing, podcasts for them, basically get their, bring them more business, you know. And uh, by, I, I expect after a year of doing this, I may not even have to pay for advertising. I'll have it all coming in to me. And I've got some really good tactics that I'm using. Um, it's, and it's working. It's working out fantastic. So you see, um, I want to go to the last note down at the bottom where, where I'm never going backwards. You know, never going backwards. I can't fucking stand this shit that I'm, I talk to people and they're like, it seems like I can't get ahead. I take one step forward and I fall 10 steps back. And I'm like, why the fuck is that, man? Let's fix that shit. If you're one of those people, man, stay tuned to this show. If you're not, I still got good shit for you guys. I got good stuff to make life even better. Um, but yeah, so if that happened to me, it collapsed. I've got all this this, this knowledge that leads me to new occupations that I uh, that I have, I, new careers. And if I and I I do hate my job, but I make really good money, and it's what I've been doing for my entire life, just about since I was 13 years old. And it's what feeds the family. But I definitely want to get out. And this is my way out. If you hate your job, uh, do like I said. Listen to podcasts. Start edging your, educating yourself slowly. The one thing I like about what I'm doing is it's all on my time. There is nights now where I am super tired. When you when you get like three, four hours of sleep for like a week, it gain, it, it catches up on you. And you're just like, Pah. there's some, some nights I look and I'm like, I'm not working tonight. Uh, but you can take it on your own pace. And you see, it doesn't. Uh, and it doesn't stop there. I'm learning. It's already paying me back, and I'm going to be able to promote this the Gringo Show here. It also, I look at if it all fails, uh, it's giving me a community resume. So one of my thoughts is, is, if life's so hard and it's hard to do everything ourselves, I may consider, and I have lived in communities, a group of people living uh, uh, together, and. Um, and I, I really liked it. It was really wonderful for my kids. And uh, we want to stick on the subject of stacking functions. But if I ever needed or wanted to do something like this, I have a complete resume of podcasts, videos, my Facebook page, that people who are, my idea is, is going to farmers and stuff like that and just showing them the knowledge that I know, like aquaponics and things like that. And it basically gives me a resume. And they would know, they would know better about me than I would know about them. And I hope that it, at, at least of all this work that I'm doing, uh, I would have new friends in my life, people like-minded, and also hopefully invites to places that I could live at where I can practice permaculture and natural farming techniques and things like that. Which brings us into what are people doing that are producing our food by stacking functions? So, uh, yes, what, what are they doing? Let's go into that before I give you guys some more uh, details on what you can do. I've got another list here for you, by the way. Uh, so I want to tell you a story about a guy named Masanobu Fukuoka. He is in Japan. And there's this, uh, in permaculture, uh, at the time there was a guy named Bill Mullison who passed away. And um, he wrote a whole book on permaculture, basically farming with nature. And what they did is they called it Huga culture. Now, I can't, I got to do a podcast on Huga culture for you guys. Um, Basically, it's when people come and dig a, a hole in the ground. Let's just keep it simple. Uh, they'll, grow, they'll, they'll dig a hole, which is kind of like a trough, a long, a long canal, you know, a couple inches down or a couple feet down. And then they'll go get some wood and they'll bury it. They'll put the wood in that trough and then they'll rebury it with the soil. So what this does is it, it stacks functions, does many things. Uh, they will also leave a, what's called a swale right in front of that mound and it'll be laying, uh, uh, what is it, perpendicular to the, or parallel to the, uh, I'm sorry, perpendicular. Uh, and so when the, when it rains, the, it fills up this little, like, gutter is what it swales pretty much is, you know. I know there's some eye rolling going on back there for people who know. It's just basically, it's keeping it simple, a little gutter. So the water fills up and it flows down and that wood, when it starts rotting in this thing called huga culture, absorbs that wood and holds it like a sponge. Also, it holds nutrients. So when you grow trees or plants on top, the roots go down and they, they have water or during, during droughts and things like that. And they also get vitamins and nutrients from it. So it's a way of stacking functions. But So a lot of people are bringing in this heavy equipment, bulldozing and digging by hand and picks and shovels. And Fukuoka came along and said, why don't I just plant some trees, trees that have fast, big, enormous root systems, and uh, let nature just do it. 
And of course it took a few years. I think it was like five to eight years. There's these trees, I forget the name of them. I researched so much, you guys, so unless I make notes, which I don't have in front of me right now, but you basically put these trees in that will actually lift the house off its foundation. And uh, so he let them, the tree do all the work for him. And you see where I'm going? He came and cut the tree, used it for firewood or building materials, multiple uses that you can build another huga culture bed with it. And uh, then he just hadn't, didn't have to do all the work. Fukuoka was a guy who planned things way in ahead, way ahead as far as stacking functions. It was one of the greatest minds that ever lived. Um, so that's that's one scenario on farming. And then there's another one I love. I, I'll, I'm going to continue. He's like, besides Fukuoka, is Mr. Mark Shepard. And Mr. Mark Shepard had uh, apples that, uh, if you guys don't know about him, he grows. He's part of Organic Farms, Organic Valley uh, the co-op, you'll see them, their products and all over the major grocery stores and things like that. So he, he grows uh, organic produce, so he gets these apples that look like shit. You know, people don't want to buy, they want to buy a shiny apple and uh, he'll sell off all the shiny ones that look good for human consumption as far as eating the apple. And the bad ones, which just don't look good and won't be able to sell for market, he squeezes them into, wait for it, recreational ethanol. Yes, he makes hard apple cider. You can make apple cider vinegar. There's tons of things that you can do. Most most of us would look at that and be like, oh, well, let's put it in the compost, Let's, uh, which is still stacking functions, but utilizing that to make money. So very interesting guys that people who have done some amazing things. Uh, rich people I know, they uh, they have multiple income streams. I guess really that's what I've, I've kind of learned, not most of them, not all of them but they'll have their hands in a whole bunch of things so that if one fails, they still have an income stream coming in and they learn what did that fail. Uh, I've never heard anybody, but I haven't searched for it, is stacking functions within those businesses. I think that would be really awesome. That would be the golden ticket is like to have each business be able to be connected in some way where it won't get hurt if it went down. But because I do this, this allows me to do this because I have these two, it allows me to do a third um, option. You see where I'm going? That's what I want to do for you guys is uh, design this stuff for you. Show you guys th these designs that, that'll, that'll help you. Um, so uh, let me give you guys, a, leave you guys with a couple more because I'm pretty sure this is, this is a long one already. Um, uh, give you guys some more examples. Baking soda. If a lot of you guys don't know, uh, you can replace a lot of your, your uh, cleaning, cleaning supplies with it. Uh, you can wash you can it works as an abrasive to wash tiles i mean it's got thousands of uses you can make a concoction to drink it it is said and uh you can actually detox the metals out of your body uh using baking soda so you can use it as as it's medicinal it's cleaning it's deodorizing i use it as deodorant you know what i mean there's just you can brush your teeth with it so you see how by getting one thing like this which is and it's super cheap you could do multiple things and again clean out your house and have just this one product here to use that's natural. It won't hurt you or harm you. Um, here's a fun one I love is my grill. I bought a charbroil infrared grill and it's just awesome. And this thing serves many functions, living a simple life, especially with a family of uh, four living in an RV, is we do most of our cooking on the grill to save from the wear and tear. Uh, you know, these, these RVs are designed more for uh, you know, traveling in weekend warriors and things like that, but we actually use the shit. So we cook almost in, in, entirely outside. We're in uh, uh, Southern California in the Northern San Diego region. So we have very mild climates. That's why we're here. I'm a pig. I fucking love the weather here. It's wonderful. Uh, but I'm not going to say any bad things about it. No, 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 no bad things. Not about the fucking people. Nothing about the fucking people. The people are just people. Um, but anyways, the grill. So I could actually, we use this as an oven. In fact, the mother two nights ago baked her first loaf of bread on a cast iron pan, artesian bread, I think it was. So we're able to use it as an oven. We've made pizzas, we've made bread, we've made uh, um, enchiladas. Uh, we basically use it as an oven. It also can be converted into a smoker. And I haven't done this yet, but I've seen other people do it. Uh, obviously, I can barbecue steaks and things like that, hamburgers, whatever. Um, also, it can uh, we use it as the stove? As I said, we, we have burners, so we're able to cook on it. And again, bring you guys back to emergency. If the power went out, I have like 
a big old giant uh, bottles of propane. Two, I mean, they're like 35 gallons, they're like 100 pounds a piece. I got two of those. So in an emergency, we'd have hot water, we'd be taking showers, and we, as far as the grill goes, we'd always have a place to cook, you know, and not, it doesn't phase me, you know, that whatever would happen, I'm like, oh my God, I've got 75 gallons of water, not including the water I have in, inside of my trailer in my storage tank, if I'm able to turn that on before I figure out what's going on. And I also have a place to cook. Um, and you see in this lifestyle design, most of you aren't gonna live in RVs, although I think it's really smart if you're just starting out, but we're not gonna go into that. Or if you're in debt, you know, or you're just plain and sick and tired of shit, let other people clean stuff up for you. I mean, I've got a jacuzzi I utilize all the time. We got a lake over here. It's just wonderful and I don't have to maintain anything. Um, but yeah. In an emergency, we we got everything. So what I want to get for you guys is is in your life is that when shit hits the fan, when the economy goes up, here in California, we just had a grass prices hike up, the taxes. Thank you very much, Jerry Brown. Uh, if it's brown, flush it down. Um, it doesn't. I want to want it to get to where where like with me. A lot of those things don't necessarily affect me. And if they do, they don't affect me that bad because I've streamlined my life through stacking functions. And when I see all the suffering and things, I go, I look and I think, my God, that must suck. My God. Uh, but th things are going, I'm, I'm building on things and you see where I'm going. I, I'm stacking functions on things and it makes your life a lot easier. And if systems crash, it doesn't, I want to create it so that you guys aren't affected as well. Um, so that's uh, that's that's all I've got for you guys today. Um, stacking functions. I hope that this has inspired you and is going to get you rolling into that mind frame of like, what the fuck could I do, man? What could I stack up there? Uh, but I want to hear from you guys. Let me know what you guys are interested in, um, what you guys want to he uh, see, hear, whatever it is. I'm here for you guys, and thanks for stopping by. I will look forward to seeing you guys on the next one. Gringo Show. Peace out, you guys.